Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, then welcome. My name is Mia Danielle and I chat all about holistic and clutter-free spaces. So if that's something you're into, be sure to click subscribe and turn on those notifications. I release new videos every Tuesday. So we've all played the game before, right? That whole, what would you bring with you if you could only bring one item on a desert island? I've seen this played out so many times and for some reason, it's just a lot of fun. You're like trying to out engineer the person next to you with who's really bringing the most valuable item. And then you start giving reasons why your item is far superior to their item. So Matt and I were kind of doing this the other day. We were trying to think of, you know, if you could start from scratch with a home that was empty except for furniture, we also decided to leave out consumables because those things are constantly fluctuating and changing. So things like food and consumable toiletries. But if you started out with a blank slate, inside of your home, just the furniture that you need, what would be the first, we had said 50 items that you would buy or that you would bring into your space. I quickly realized these things add up fast, especially if you get into the specifics of the category, like instead of saying clothes, you get specific with it, 10 shirts, three pairs of pants, etc. which is what I was trying to do because, you know, I think that you can easily come up with 100 categories and shove a lot and a lot and a lot of stuff into those categories. You could say clothes and then fill three rooms of your home with just you know, wall to wall clothes, you could say electronics and fill an entire room with electronics, right? So I was trying to really stretch myself and think in terms of what 50 items specifically what I bring into my home that I feel like I would be able to comfortably live with for an extended period of time. Again, I found pretty quickly that the 50 was just not gonna cut it if you're getting specific. So we ended up with 100, and I do think that I have a pretty solid list that would work for me. I had Matt sitting there and like checking and second guessing some of the things that I had on my list. At one point I didn't have a jacket, and he's like, you know, you need to have a jacket for when it gets cold, right? So there are little things that it was kind of fun having another person there to really keep me in check. This is not in any way saying these are the only 100 items that you should be owning inside of your home. That would be ridiculous. I left off things like a strainer because I can live without one, but I still do like having a strainer in my kitchen, you know? So I think that it's just fun to do and it's a cool mental exercise to really help to slide things back into perspective. And so I'd love to see what yours are. If you're able to break down 100 things that you would start completely fresh with, if you had a clear slate, what would those things be? And so let me go ahead and share what some of mine were. For some reason, I naturally gravitated toward the closet and started with the wardrobe. That's just where my mind went first. And I think the reason for that is because it can get really nuanced in there. Like that's where the numbers can really expand pretty quickly. And I recently did a closet declutter video that you probably saw a couple of weeks ago where I narrowed down my closet items from like 50 to around 30. So I already have a pretty minimized closet space and it was fresh on my mind. But if I had to start with 100 items fresh, I would narrow that down even further. I think that I could really survive with 15 quality tops. I could work with three pairs of pants. I tend to rotate between the same three pairs of pants anyway. I put five pairs of fresh quality underwear, five pairs of socks, one pair of PJs, one bra, one jacket, since Matt pointed out that I had originally left a jacket off, and three pairs of shoes. And all of these are actually pretty close to what I currently own. Now, I will say I didn't include any dresses, but I could very easily exchange two or three of those shirts for some in-season dresses. But altogether, that brought the clothing and wardrobe section of things to 34 out of the 100 items. Next, I started thinking about the bathroom. Now, just a reminder, I'm not considering any consumables, so things like the shampoo and the conditioner and face lotions and stuff like that, I'm not counting because that can vary so much. But the things that I would actually need in order to function inside of the space, I would definitely need my Sonicare toothbrush. And yes, it does need to be Sonicare. I'm very much set on the type of toothbrush that I have. A metal razor, and I currently am using a metal razor as well. Two towels, two face rags. Now, for a long time, I just had one towel. And it wasn't until recently that I brought in a second towel for myself and a second towel for Matt. But if I was just filling a space for myself, it would be nice to have that extra towel around just in case something happens, which puts us at a total of 40 items going forward. Moving on to the bedroom, definitely the majority of the items had to do with the bed itself. So I could do with one set of quality sheets, 
a comforter, two pillows, ideally feather pillows or down pillows. And I would say four lamps, not necessarily all for the bedroom, but for the whole house. I just put them in this section. I think that would be enough to cover all of the rooms, at least for a period of time. And that puts us at a total of eight out of 100 items for the bedroom, which puts us at a solid 48. So I decided after a lot of thinking and kind of back and forth, I decided to do an office supply section because I don't have like an official standalone office, but I do use a variety of spaces in my home as an office. And having these supplies is definitely a big part of my day-to-day -day life. So I kind of debated on whether or not to include any technology items at all, or just write that off as we're not gonna include any tech. But Matt insisted, he's like, you kind of have to have a cell phone and how often are you actually using a computer? It's pretty frequently, right? So I did put on a laptop, a cell phone, one microphone and one camera for work, obviously. And I need one memory card for that as well. Then one pair of scissors and one lighter. A box of pens, like matching pens, or just one really nice quality pen that would last me for a while. And a notebook. I'm really big on my notebooks. I really do like to have those in reaching distance at most times, whether it's a bullet journal or a goal planner or just like a notepad to make a list on. So I feel like those are pretty important in my day-to-day -day life. Now, I don't think that this is surprising, but the bulkiest room or space to plan for was definitely the kitchen. And that was followed pretty closely by the wardrobe where you just have so many little nitpicky items. But the kitchen has a lot of specifics and different items that you kind of need if you intend to use your kitchen for cooking. So here's what I was able to narrow it down to. And actually I ended up with 97 and had to sit there and think for the last three. And you'll probably think that it's hilarious the three things that I forgot because one of them's pretty important. So I started off with a four piece quality cookware set. You guys know that I love my caraway pan set that I have. It has storage units and it takes up a small amount of space. Also, it doesn't have Teflon, which is huge. I don't think I will ever buy anything. Actually, I can say for certainty, I will never buy any pans that have the scratch off Teflon at the bottom. It's been proven to be really unhealthy and also it's a nuisance. It doesn't last very long. I also put four plates and four bowls. Matt pointed out that I really didn't need that much and that's true, like if it was just me by myself and I'm just planning items that would fulfill me inside of that space. Like when I go camping, I use the same bowl and I wash it out and I reuse it and I could definitely do that. But I was just thinking I have these extra items and it looks nicer, I think, just to have a small little collection of things. And then, you know, you don't have to worry about when company comes over or if you wanna eat two different things that, you know, you might need one of each anyway. And then I put one set of silverware. Now, if you think that that's cheating because I counted the individual sets of socks and underwear, well, then we can say one spork because I. I know that I could live with a single Swiss Army spork as well. It has like the different things that you can pull out. I've definitely done that camping, so I know it's doable. But otherwise, when you buy silverware, it does tend to come in one set, one container. And I think that I would be good with that. Another thing, kind of like with the plates and the bowls that I wouldn't necessarily need this much of, but I think it just looks nicer in a set of four is cups. Plus it just makes it a little easier. You have a little leeway for washing your dishes and stuff. So I would say, Four cups I would be more than happy with, two coffee mugs as well, and a spatula. Now, sure, I could exchange one of the cups for an additional spatula or something in that area. For me, it gets kind of nitpicky there because I don't really know which one would benefit me more. And then I put five dish rags, four cup towels, and one coffee maker or coffee press, all of which I do use quite a bit. And then I put 10 bins as well. But I wasn't necessarily thinking that all of the bins would be for the kitchen, although some of them definitely would be used in the pantry to hold the food and the consumables that we're not counting in this. And it was at this point with 97 out of 100 items that I started to become stumped and go back and forth. I mean, there are items that I know that I like and use, but I couldn't determine which ones were higher priority from the other ones. And, you know, so I thought about like, well, a cutting board is great, right? But you also need a cookie sheet and, you know, strainers are nice, but they're not necessarily necessary. And so my mind just kind of <laughs> got stuck at 97 for a while. So my last three items, a cookie sheet type of pan, something flat that I can cook things on in the oven, a mixing bowl, because it's really annoying when you don't have a mixing bowl. A lot of things that you cook require you to mix things together. And then I couldn't believe that I forgot this one. This was like number 100, the very last thing I thought of. And it's like the first thing that you need when you're going out into the wilderness, or if you're on a desert island. And that was a knife. 
how was I going to cut things? I don't know. But I added a knife as number 100, and so I feel pretty solid about that choice. So that was the list of 100 items that I could live with that I, if I was starting from scratch, I would be super happy if I had just those 100 items. Could I exchange some of the things for other things? Sure. And that's one of those things that like, that's why it's a theoretical mental experiment, because there are some things that maybe you wouldn't realize until you're actually in the moment. But I'm really curious, like what are the things that I didn't put in my list that you were like, oh no, like I can't survive without fill in the blank. Like we need some of this around here. The decor items and, and the way that you make your, your space make you feel, right, is important. So I'm not disregarding things like artwork and plants and things that just really make your house feel like a home and feel good and holistic. When I got stuck, I almost put like, a piece of artwork or a plant. And then I realized that, you know, a knife is probably a little more important than some of those things logistically. Hopefully you found this a little bit fun or maybe even just uh, educational if you start to really think about the things that you need and could live with inside of your space. And again, I'd love to hear down below what you have to share and I will chat with you next week.